Hello and good evening, this is Vicious. I hope you can say that you're doing well tonight, and if not, at least by the end of this video, say that you're well informed. So based on the popularity of the Aruba S2500 Switch videos that we have up already, we're going to go ahead and continue that series with some more basics that are very important to know for your basic configuration. Now there's two videos already out there if you wanna check them out. The first one is the initial configuration video. That goes over how to set up your Switch like right out of the box. So whether you bought it brand new or got it used on eBay, it goes over the factory reset, updating the firmware, and the very basic configurations you need to get up and running. The next video was the fan modification video. So we did that. We actually took the switch apart and did some aftermarket fans, made it completely sign out. That was pretty cool. Now in this third video, we're going over more basics that are really important for anyone who wants something more than just a layer two switch. And that's going to be creating an administrative user so that we don't have to use the default admin user. You can create your own username and that gives you better security. We're going to go over jumbo frames. That's something I'm using in my environment right now. So we'll set up jumbo frames on an interface. We're going to go over how to create a VLAN, how to destroy a VLAN. And also before we do any of that, one thing I want to do real quick was backtrack to the initial configuration video where I showed you how to update the firmware to the newest version over the web interface. So some people had a little bit of trouble with that because if you bought a brand new switch or a used switch, you might be getting some random version of firmware already loaded on it. And based on the firmware version that you get, the web interface can be kind of flaky. It works with some browsers and not with others. And rather than dealing with any of that mess, there's one really easy way to update your firmware. So the first thing you want to do is go download your firmware. If you want to figure out where to download it from, go back to that initial configuration video. Also, I'm going to try to give you guys a link in the description of this video to download the newest version right here. That way you can just get it directly from me off of my Dropbox or something. What you want to do is get yourself a nice thumb drive. It doesn't have to be very big, eight gigabytes or less. It only needs probably, you can get away with a gigabyte one. Format it to a FAT32, and then you want to create a folder called Aruba Image. Now this is the thing that is really important. A-R-U-B-A-I-M-A-G-E, Aruba Image, all one word. Stick your firmware in there, and then put it on the root of your thumb drive. At that point, plug it into the back USB port on the switch and follow the on-screen menu where you press the two buttons on the front of the switch. Go to Upgrade OS Image and just kind of follow through the prompts. This will get you updated to the newest firmware without having to deal with the web interface. So that's just a good tip for you guys to move on and hopefully get where we're at today in this video. So everything is going to be through the terminal. We'll use PuTTY today. And since I'm only using the terminal, I think I'll try to make the text a little bit bigger. That way it's easier to see. And we'll do like a 16. There we go. And let's make sure that fits on screen. Good. So like I said, we've already created an admin user. I'll log in with my new user. And I'll show you how to start with this. So when you're on camera, you never know how to type right. So let's get started with an admin user. Let's go into enable mode. And then we're gonna go into configure terminal. And this is gonna give us where we wanna be. So first thing is the show command show. And this admin user is under management user. And right now you can see that I have the default admin account and I have the one I created. I wanna show you that first. Now here's how you create your own. We're gonna go into management user and if you hit the question mark it shows you what options you have what we want to do is where it says username up there we're going to type in the username of our new user in this case i'll just use test if we use question mark again what do we want next is the role name so the root is the all-powerful administrative role so that's what we're going to use here and you can see it's just telling you to press enter so we'll hit enter and it's going to ask us for our password At this point, if I say show management user again, you'll see that we have a new user called test. If I exit out real quick, all the way, close that session out, we can actually go ahead and restart that session and log in with our new user. All right, so that's how you do the management user that's really quick and easy. 
The next thing is jumbo frames. So if you don't know what jumbo frames are, you probably don't need them, but for those who are buying the Switch for the 10 gigabit networking, chances are you might also want to play around with jumbo frames just because it can enhance the, uh, the speed of that connectivity. For example, in my environment, I was getting about nine gigabits per second with the standard 1,500 MTU. But once I enable jumbo frames, I'm just shy of a full 10 gigabits of throughput. Also, in a virtual environment like VMware, where you have a para-virtualized network card, the jumbo frames lowers the CPU utilization for the networking because there's less processing to encapsulate all those packets. So let's do this real quick. Let's start with, well, let's go to the, we're already enabled, let's go configure terminal. And let's start with a show interface. And along the way, while we're doing this, I'm showing you some really nice commands to know, such as all of our show commands. So show interface brief is a good one. And it'll kind of show you what's going on here. Here's the interface names and what's going on with them, how they're connected. What I want to show you is down towards the bottom. Here's those four 10 gigabit interfaces. I'm currently not using this one in production, the 10 gigabit ethernet number three here. And uh, we'll go ahead and configure that one for jumbo frames. Another nice one is the show interface status. I like this one a lot because it gives me almost the same information as before, but it also shows me any descriptions I have associated with the ports. So again, these are the 10 gigabit interfaces. Starts at zero, one, two, three. When I said that the third one's the one we're gonna configure, I'm actually talking about this one. So let's do this. We wanna to go to our interface. So interface gigabit ethernet, zero, one, two. Actually, let's do more show commands first. I'd, li I'd like to show you this first. Show interface gigabit ethernet, zero, one, two. And I just wanna show you that it's all default. And what we're looking for is the MTU. It's the current default of 1,514 bytes. So that's what we're changing. So interface gigabit ethernet, and that's gonna be zero, one, two. Now we're in that configuration for that interface. We'll just type in MTU, a question mark again will show us what our options are, and the maximum is 9,216. Another really nice thing while you're in configuring your interfaces is the description command, and we'll say this is our test port. And I think with spaces, you might need parentheses, so I always use underscores. So test port. Now let's exit out. Let's do a show interface gigabit zero one two. Let's look at what we have. Now our MTU is at 9,216. That is jumbo frames enabled. Also, we have our description set. So if I was to go back and say, show interface status, we'll actually see that description on our port. So that's how you set up jumbo frames. Pretty easy. Now we'll get into the most complicated part of the tutorial tonight, and that's gonna be VLANs. Now let's go ahead and start with our commands. Show VLAN. Right now I have my VLAN 1, VLAN 10, VLAN 15. Then we have, we're going to create a VLAN 25. The other thing is there's show VLAN, sorry, show interface VLAN. And here you can see I have VLAN 1, VLAN 10, and that's it. You notice there was a discrepancy. I have a VLAN 1 and a VLAN 10 interface, but under the VLANs, I have a, a 1, a 10, and a 15. I'm not quite sure the magic behind the potion here, but there's actually two separate pieces of VLAN in, in the Aruba switch. The interface, which is kind of like your layer three interface, and then the VLAN is a separate part, uh, and they kind of go work together, so we'll configure both of them. So let's do this. We'll start with VLAN 25, and that creates that VLAN, the overall arcing VLAN. What you can do with this one, this is where you'd actually set up your description. So we'll set up our description and we'll say this is our test VLAN. All right. So if I say show VLAN now, you'll see that we now have a VLAN 25 and it's called test VLAN. There's no ports associated with it yet. So the next thing we want to do is show interface VLAN. I just want to show you 
that we have the VLAN 1, the VLAN 10, but there is no VLAN 25 interface. So that's the next piece. So interface VLAN 25. We've now created that VLAN 25 interface. If you go look at what options you have with your question mark, you can see this is where you'd set the IP address. This is a really important piece. Also your description as well. So we're gonna say description. This is VLAN 25 and IP. You wanna put the IP address. For me, it's gonna be 192.168.25.234. Your subnet mask, 255.255.255.0 for me. Enter. And did not like what I put. Question mark, oh, address. Okay, IP address. 192.168.25.234. Subnet mask. And now if I say show VLAN interface, show interface VLAN, we have VLAN 1, VLAN 10, and we now have our new VLAN 25. You can see that we have our layer three address associated with it, our subnet mask that goes with it, so this is how you set up your VLANs. Now this is a routable interface because it has an IP address. If you're gonna use the layer three switching to do inter VLAN routing, you're gonna to have to do this. If you're simply just using it for tagging, then that's not necessary. You can have your router or your firewall do all of your routing for you. Deleting it is really easy as well, but I wanted to show you because the same catch 22 where you have to create both the VLAN and the VLAN interface is the same way you have to take them apart. So if I say, no VLAN or no interface, VLAN 25. And I say show interface VLAN. You'll see there's one and 10 and no more 25. But if I say show VLAN, we're still gonna see that test VLAN that we created, is, it does exist. So you also have to do a no VLAN 25. Now show VLAN, that is all gone. The next thing is, let me do a show run. This is gonna show my full running configuration real quick. One of the really strange things about this switch, and it does not work like this for all the Aruba switches, I think it has to do with the fact that this switch was not really designed to be a standalone configured switch, but rather part of a larger environment with a controller. It doesn't let you actually assign a port directly to a VLAN. So if you want to, go into an interface port and then say, you know, switch port access, access VLAN, like you would in a traditional Cisco environment, it will not work. Instead, you have to actually create a switching profile and in that profile, associate the VLAN and then go assign the profile to your switch port. So let me show you what it looks like in my running configuration real quick. Under my interface profiles, I created one called VLAN 10. So I said interface profile, switching profile, VLAN 10, and then the two commands I put in there was the access VLAN and the native VLAN. So access VLAN means that everything that's in this profile is going to be accessing VLAN 10. Native VLAN just says anything that's not tagged with the VLAN tag will also go to VLAN 10. A little bit redundant, but I noticed that was how the initial VLAN 1 was configured out of the box. So that's what I also followed for my VLAN 10 interface. So following that, we can just do the same thing. So interface profile, let's just quit. Interface profile. And then we have several different kinds of profiles. We're gonna do a switching profile because this is gonna go into a switch port. And then you're gonna give it a name. We'll call this VLAN 25, all right. That takes us into the configuration of that switching profile. What options do we have? There's that access VLAN, the native VLAN, we'll do that. So access VLAN 25, and then native VLAN 25. And it's warning me that that won't take effect until we would create the VLAN, I just destroyed them. So we'll go ahead and exit. Let's do VLAN 25, exit, interface VLAN 25 exit and let's go back to our interface gigabit ethernet 0 slash 1 slash 2 and now we can assign that profile so let's go to 
switching profile, VLAN 25. That's what we called it. You need to know it by name. It's now associated. And let's go back to our show commands. So show VLAN. And you can see that VLAN 25 now has that 10 gigabit port associated with it. So that is how you create an administrative user account, how you configure jumbo frames, how you create a VLAN, destroy a VLAN, create a switching profile to assign your VLAN, assign that switching profile to your interface, and also the easy way to upgrade your firmware. Kind of ran through it quick to keep the video short. Feel free to slow it down, pause it, rewatch it, whatever you need to do to get it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them to me in the comments section, and I'll be sure to help you out with those questions. Once again, this is Fishes. I hope everybody enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.